Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is talking about the menu aspect of ordering our pizza. So if you weren't here in the last video, I'd recommend you go back and watch that first as it kind of explained how we work with this API, what an API is, what we're actually doing here and you know, what are all these lines of code? Because if you just read this, this isn't going to make any sense. And there is no documentation online explaining what this is. You kind of just have to figure it out, which is what we did in the last video. Anyways, before we get too far, I do need to mention the sponsor of this series, which is Kite. Another massive, massive thank you to them. There will be a link in the description if you'd like to download Kite. And Kite is definitely going to save us a lot of time in this series by allowing us to kind of see the documentation from all these different modules that we've been exploring before as some auto completions while we're typing. And you guys will see that and I'll point that out as we go through the series. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started and let's look at the menu for our store. So we've already found the store by using this line of code here. So we're going to go through the next part of the quick um, start here and just actually get a menu from our store. So what we did here was we created the customer object, found the closest store to the customer, printed out that store. Now what we're going to do is I'm just going to print a blank line um, like that. And I'm also just going to print menu backslash N and we'll do backslash n like this so we just get a little bit nice nicer formatting when we do this so what i'm going to do now is define my menu object so menu equals my local dominoes dot get menu and i'm going to use the menu to search for a specific item and the name that i want to search for in this case is just going to be coke so we're going to look to see what you know items on the menu have coke involved in them and then we'll print those out and have a look at them so let's look at this now um, if we just go here and run this oops not cos i want to run that code give it a second and we can see that it loads up the store and then it loads on that menu the prices and the different items for whatever thing of coke it is so in this case you know 500 milliliters coke that's 177 and obviously these prices will be in the currency of whatever country you're searching in so either united states or canada and yeah that is pretty much how that works Okay, so now we kind of know how to work with this menu, right? So what we've done is, you know, we got the menu and we know to search. This is pretty straightforward. I'm sure none of you are confused. So what I want to do now is actually write a function that's going to allow the user to search for items on the menu. So right now, if we wanted to search for something, we had to have that line of code, which was, you know, dot search, and then we manually typed in the name. But obviously, that's like not very good if someone actually wants to use a program, and we will be writing a program that essentially allows the user to do everything without having to, you know, come in here and hard code stuff. So let's get started though, you know, by doing this with the menu, allowing the user to query it, and then we'll move into some more advanced stuff later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say define search menu like this. And what we're going to do is just take some menu object. Now in here, what I'm going to do is get the user to type in some item that they want to search for, show them the results, and then, you know, ask them, do you want to search again? Are you done searching? If they say yes, they can type another item and so on. So the first thing we need to do is get what the user is going to search for. So we need to start by printing, say, um, you know, you are now searching the menu or something. You are now searching the menu dot, 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 type an item to look for. We do something like that. So print, um, type an item to look for a colon. And this needs to be an input. And then what we're going to do before this is just say item equals input. And I'm just going to do something here, which is dot strip, which is going to remove any leading or trailing white spaces. And then I'm going to put this to dot lower. So this is just going to take whatever they type in and make it all lowercase. Now, what I'm going to do is capitalize the first letter of this string. The reason I'm going to do that is because um, when we search for something, we need to have like the capitals. I, it's kind of weird the way this API works. If you have lower cases and you search for something, it's not going to find the item if it has a capital, if that makes any sense. Like for example, if I tried to search for Coke, but all the items had Coke like this, this isn't going to match. So we need to make sure that we have capitals on whatever item that we're looking for. So oh, we need to correct this. So to do that, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say if item so essentially that means if it's not a blank string so say if item does not equal some blank string means it actually types something then we will turn this into an uppercase so to do that we're going to say item equals item zero dot upper plus item colon um, like this to the end so colon one to the end what this is going to do is recreate the item string such that the first character of item is going to be an uppercase and the rest of that is going to be whatever the rest of the string is. Now this should work for us, but actually to even make this a little bit safer, we'll say, and the len 
of item like this is greater than one. So essentially, if we have two characters in the item that we're searching for, then this will work. Otherwise, what we'll do is we'll give some error message saying for them to try again. And we're going to put this all in a while loop in a second, but just bear with me. Then we're going to say print um, invalid. And actually, what we'll do is we'll say exiting search. So if they um, insert some invalid string, we'll just get out of the search. So what I'm going to do now is put all this in a while loop. So I'm going to say while true like that. And we'll do all of this. And then inside this else, I'm going to break and below here. Now, if we have a valid item, we haven't broken out. It wasn't invalid. We'll search for that item and display it. So we'll just say print um, results for colon. And then we can actually just format this using an F string. So inside of here, I'm going to put an F before my quotation marks. Inside of here, I'm going to put item, which is going to be the item that they search for. And then we will simply search that item. So we'll say menu dot search and in here item and that should be good to go. So now what I'm going to do is call this function like this. So search menu. And again, notice kite is giving us these completions, which is saving us some time. Um, and this should actually be good to go. So essentially what we've done is, you know, we've got the closest store to the customer. We've printed out that store. We've now just printed, you know, the menu. We're going to get whatever this menu object is. We're going to need to pass that into our function like this. So when we search the menu, we'll do that. And then what this search menu function is going to do is say, you are now searching the menu while true. So essentially until we get some invalid input, we're going to keep asking them to look for some item. We're going to strip off the white spaces. We're going to put everything to lowercase. Then what we're going to do is say, so long as the item is not a blank string, which actually I can omit that. And I can just say if the len of the item is greater than one, so there's more than one character in there, then what we'll do is say item equals item zero, which will be the first character to uppercase plus item one colon to the end, which essentially means all of the other characters in there. We'll combine that together into one string. If that's not true, so if this condition isn't true, we'll say that's invalid and we'll break. Otherwise, we'll look for the results for that item and print them out. So let's have a look at how this works. If I made any mistakes or not, which I likely did. So Python tutorial.py. So menu, it says you are now searching the menu type an item to look for. What should we look for? Let's look for a pizza and search takes one positional argument, but two were given. Uh, oh, interesting. Sorry, we just need to do name equals item. My apologies here, guys. So do that. Make sure that is a bug. So let's do this one more time. And you are now searching the item. Let's look for pizza. And wow, look how many pizzas we get showing up. And you know what? We can search for another item. So let's look for um, Sprite, see if there's anything there. And it gives us some answers for Sprite. And this is how we can search and query the menu. So that's the first step that we've done. I think I'm actually going to end the video at this. And in the next video, what we're going to do is think about how we can get the customer information to come in. So how can we write something like that? And then once we have all of these items, how can we get the user to select specific items and how can we add that to an order so that we can eventually place that and get the credit card information? So you can see there's a lot of steps to go here, but this is kind of what we're going to be doing in this series, building some of these functions that can do this for us and working our way towards a program where a user can actually order a pizza from their command line. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.